Hey everybody, we're back at the Kennedy Auto Drill Press. In my previous video I mentioned measuring RPM and I decided I'm going to do a quick a quick video on how to do that because I just estimated that the spindle in the lowest speed in back gear was 50 or 60 RPM so I'm going to see how close my calibrated eye is to the truth. I have two different tachometers here. Well, actually, only only one of these is an actual tack. This one, this is a really nice piece. I bought this on eBay a number of years ago. It's a mechanical tack. It's there, there's two ranges: a 50 to 500 RPM and a 500 to 5,000 RPM. And it comes with a variety of tips, an extension. And also this nifty wheel here, which you can use in combination with a formula, which you have on the instructions, you can measure surface speed with this, with a little bit of math. Then over here, I have something called a rev counter. Uh, I believe Keith Fenner did a video with this, actually on his drill press, on his, uh, what was it, a Sydney drill press or a S Sibley, that's it. Anyway. I will show you guys what a rev counter is. So I'm going to start off in the highest speed. You can see we're on the largest driving pulley, the smallest driven pulley, and I'm going to take it out of back gear. Gears are now disengaged. I'll turn this pin so it clicks in and then just rotate the pulley until that clicks all the way in. Now everything's engaged we are in high speed. I also did relace the belt for the second time. If you watch my previous video, you'll see that I, I couldn't go in high speed because the belt just didn't have enough tension, but now it's just right, nice and tight. So this is, this is high speed. So let's see what this is in RPM. Okay, so I have my regular tack set up. I'm just going to shove this right into the jaws of the chuck and we'll see what speed we get. I'm going to start off on the high range. I, I doubt this is spinning 500 RPM. I'm going to guess, uh, hmm, I'm going to guess four, 400 is my, is my guess for the uh, highest speed. But I always like to start in the higher range just so you don't risk damaging the internal components of the tack. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that's That's actually uh, looks like 550. So before I put it on the on the low stage, just I don't know. I'm not sure how accurate it is at the lowest end of the scale. So I do want to try this tack on the low range, but I am afraid of over over spinning it. So I'm going to put the belt one one pulley lower geared, and we'll see what that speed is. Okay, that's a little more mild mannered. We're on the low range. You can see we're at right here, 300 RPM. Okay, so second to highest speed is 300. I feel safe going to the, to the highest speed. Okay, here we go. Oh. Okay. I, I pulled away initially just because I was afraid of it overspinning, but we're at 450, 60, 70, 80, 480 RPM. So you can see how the tack was not perfectly accurate at the lower end of the high range. And that's really just kind of the, the nature of gauges. They're typically accurate within the middle of their range. So on the high range it was reading 550 RPM. On the low range it was reading 480. 
which I think is a little bit more accurate. So the highest speed of this drill press is identical to the lowest speed of my Craftsman benchtop drill press. So that's good. So this is a pretty versatile because I, I only use my Craftsman drill press at the 500 RPM speed anyway, so I, I could use this drill press for pretty much 90-99% of my drilling needs. So now let's put it in the lowest gear. Okay, here we are, low speed. I don't think it will register on this, but I'm just going to give it a try anyway. Low range, of course. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Okay, so that means it's time to use the rev counter. So here's my rev counter. It is a Starrett. And it's, it's really basic. You see there's a little spindle here with a tip similar to my other tack. And as you rotate this, it's geared. And it counts how many rotations there are. So right now I've rotated it 20 times. And it goes both directions, so you just you can count from, from zero where the dot is in either direction. And you just have to do a little bit of math. You can put this up on the spindle, let it spin for a minute, and say it spins 10 times, that's 10 RPM. But if you let it spin for only, let's say, 10 seconds, and you get 10 revolutions, you'd have to multiply that. There's 60 seconds in a minute, you let it run for 10 seconds, so you have to multiply your revolutions by 10. If it did 10 revolutions in 10 seconds, that's 60 RPM. So let's give this a try. Okay, so I have a uh, stopwatch on my phone. Yes, I know this is a very high-tech phone. I'm sure somebody will comment on it. I have the rev counter set to zero. Let's fire it up and give it a go. I'm going to let it go for 30 seconds. Thirty and a half seconds. And we got 14 revolutions. So that's easy math. 14 revolutions in half a minute. That's 28 revolutions in a minute. So, I was very far off. Very far off. My eye is not calibrated for speed, or for revolutions per minute anyway. 28 RPM. And my guess was 60. Well, I'd say this drill press is pretty damn slow, and just about as slow as you're ever going to need it to be, but it is not as slow as the Sibley drill press that Keith Fenner has in his shop. If you guys don't view his videos or you haven't heard of him or you don't subscribe to him, make sure to check him out. Um, he has a really nice Camelback Sibley drill press, probably twice as big as this one here that I have. And he has a four-speed gearbox that feeds the V-belt before it goes to the flat belt drive on the back of the machine. So he can really gear that thing down or up, depending on, on his desire. I believe he got to 5 RPM, and he used a uh, rev counter just like this, because it's too slow to use a tack. Unless you have one of those infrared tacks with the little reflective piece of tape, I imagine that would work. But anyway, uh, that was a quick, fun little experiment. Now I have some bragging rights and some small talk available to, to me when I'm giving people a shop tour. 28 RPM is the low as it goes and uh, 400 and 480 RPM tops. So that is pretty versatile for an old machine like this. When you think about it, this machine is probably 100 years old. It's got eight speeds, which is a, a fair number more than a lot of modern drill presses. And 
it is geared down and it's also got power feed which is super awesome that's a that's an excellent feature to have so anyway that's it thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this maybe you learned a little bit of something i, I didn't know what a rev counter was until not too long ago but anyway make sure to leave a comment if you feel so inclined let me know what you think and stay tuned for more